Hello, and welcome to another Eternal Bookstore Book Nook Kit customization tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these crystal decanters to go on the shelf of my Eternal Bookstore Book Nook, but you could use these for anything. They could be perfume bottles, they could be potion bottles, bottles in your kitchen for your 112 dollhouse. So let's get started. I'm making these entirely out of jewelry making supplies and really they tend to work better when they're the kind of beads that maybe you wouldn't necessarily use for jewelry making, more like a craft bead. This one I do use for jewelry making but uh, a lot of the other ones that I end up using are more crafty beads. They're mostly glass. The faceted ones look really beautiful. And the smaller the facets, the more in scale it's going to appear. So these beads have large facets, but the decanter that I have in my left hand has very small facets. So you want to look out for that. The fact is it's going to look good no matter what you do. Here's a similar color with bigger facets and it still looks fine. Another thing you're going to want to look for in your beads is a base. like. The flatter the end that the hole goes through, the easier it's going to be for your decanter to sit on the shelf. But if you're gluing it into the scene, which you're probably going to have to do anyway, or it's just going to fall over all the time, uh, then it's not going to be as important. You can see the original one I used does have a very nice flat base to it, and that made it quite easy to work with. That's part of the problem is as you're working with these fiddly little items, sometimes if they don't have a nice base on them, they're going to tip over and it's going to be difficult. So you may want to put some double stick tape down on your mat there if you have one like this one, which is kind of wobbly and might not stand up as easily. In making my original decanter, I had it be two beads high. So I wanted that second bead to not be quite as large or as wide as the first bead. It's supposed to represent the neck of the bottle. And Michaels does sell strands of glass faceted beads in all the same color, but in three or four different sizes on the like all together. So you may want to look for those. And the other thing you want to look for are those kind of crazy weird beads that you're like why would anyone make jewelry out of this because those usually make the best jars and you can see I have a bunch down here that I use to make Christmas spiders with and I use a lot of these types of sort of gaudy ornate beads in my miniature making. Those pearl ones I used as a lighting fixture once. I also like to use bead caps if I'm making jars. So I'll show you how to do both. Then you're gonna need a small bead for the lid. It can be a faceted bead just like this, or it could be a metal bead. I'm also going to show you how to use ball pins, which will make it look like a metal bead like, I, like you see here. You're definitely gonna want some tweezers and you're gonna want tweezers that you don't really care if you get glue on them. And I'm gonna be using that same gel glue, the gel super glue that I used in previous videos, and you can find the supplies that I'm able to find online on my Pinterest board, which is linked below. The beautiful thing about the gel super glue is that it provides kind of a little soft pillow for the bead to nestle into so that it doesn't tip over or roll off. That doesn't mean to say that it's never going to tip over or roll off, but the gel super glue itself tends to stay where I put it. It doesn't run down the holes of the beads as much and it does help to keep things in place as I'm putting them down. One of the things that I really struggle with sometimes when I'm doing this is metal beads that stick to my tweezers with some kind of weird magnetic force. If you know why that happens <laughs> and how I can get it to stop, be sure to let me know in the comments. The way that I get around that is by using ball pins. So what do I mean by that? Ball head pins are jewelry making findings and those are on the right. And on the left, you see the loops and threads, color ball pins. Those are sewing pins. The reason we don't 
We can use sewing pins, don't get me wrong, but there's two safety issues. One, the sewing pins are hardened, very, very hard metal. They're meant to not bend or break easily. And so if we go to cut this off to make it so that it fits inside of a bead, we run the risk that the sharp pointy end of that is going to fly across the room or hit you in the eye, or you're gonna step on it later. So if you use extreme caution and have very good wire cutters, maybe you can use those. But the ball head pins on the right are for jewelry making and they're meant to be cut with jewelry, wire cutters, and they have flat ends and they can be bent and they're very useful in all different kinds of jewelry making. I made an entire set of fireplace tools out of bronze or gold colored ball pins like these on the right. Here you see I also have some colorful craft beads that are made out of glass. And I have them on a wet paper towel because when you buy these, they're usually sold in a mix and they're full of bead release powder. You can see the kind of white column going up the center of these glass beads and the bead release powder is how they get them off the rod when they make them. So you're going to want to wash those beads off so the powder isn't all over the outside. See there that bead release is going to stay inside because it's kind of welded to the wa uh, to the glass but you want to wash it off of the outside. So I have a selection of glass beads here all of which were purchased at Michael's and as I'm looking at them, I'm thinking about the shape. I'm thinking about the size. I decided that that one was too tippy, but I like this sort of sparkly one. And here's a millifori bead with like a flower on the front. And that would make a beautiful little perfume bottle. I have some gold beads here that could be used as the tops on these little bottles but the problem I run into is that number one there's a hole through them and number two they sometimes stick to my tweezers really aggressively as I try to glue them to the glass but I also have some decorative nail heads and brad nails from my scrapbooking days these are more of like studs like you would put on say denim or furniture and they come in all kinds of finishes and all kinds of sizes some have flat tops and some have curved tops some are very large some are very small so you may have some of these laying around as well and they can actually be quite cool too you could use one of those with the little spikes coming off the sides as the base for one of these items. So I just have a selection of these out here and all I do when I make these things is play around and see what looks good to me. I like to give you lots of options because I really feel like people spend a lot of money going out and trying to buy the exact same thing that somebody else has and you may just have these laying around your house already. So I'm looking to see what will fit inside the hole of the bead if it will even fit in there or not. I accidentally end up making some kind of interesting potential goblet here, but the nail head that I'm using isn't flat enough for it to stand up. I really love that weirdly shaped cobalt blue bead in the middle. And then here's a little teeny tiny stud that is like the bigger one in the foreground there and so I'm first I'm checking to see if the hole on that bead is big enough and then I'm thinking I could maybe stick that in there as a lid but the problem is is that the prongs were too uh they they I couldn't get the prongs all inside the hole and I did try bending them and it just didn't work out Sometimes the easiest way to get these together is to put the item down and then place the bead over it. And so I do end up getting that stud to work in there, but then I change it later. 
I want to check out what this would look like as the base of something. Maybe this could be a candle or it could be like a mug. I could put another one of these on top and then I got thinking that looks like maybe it could be the base of a crystal ball. So if you were doing like a Harry Potter type thing, you could maybe use that as a crystal ball base. To make a crystal decanter like the one in the picture, I take the relatively flat ended bead from Michael's and then I get some smaller check glass crystal beads from Michael's that are also faceted and has a similar kind of almost a gray blue tinge to it. And I'm using my tweezers to set that on there and see if I like that, and I do. So I could glue that down, but I noticed that I had these slightly elongated shaped beads and I thought maybe that would look more like the neck of a decanter. And so I'm gonna reach in there and grab one of these and see how it looks. But again, how small these things are makes it so difficult sometimes to sort of place them. I can't get that to stand up on its end. And so that's when I decide to get out the ball pins. So head pins, ball pins, what's the difference? They're all jewelry making supplies, not sewing supplies, but these have a ball on the end rather than a flat end. And so I'm gonna slide my little bead on there and then slide the big bead on and check and see if that looks how I want it. And I really like the way that looks. So I'm gonna glue that together. So I've got my Loctite gel control super glue and I'm gonna put a little bit of super glue on the head pin itself, the ball pin, with the bead still on the ball pin and just let that slide down onto the ball there and I'm going to keep that upside down so that gravity will help sort of keep that bead in the glue. And now I'm going to put some gel on the bead itself, the base bead, and I'm going to slide it glue side down, down this ball pin. In retrospect, I should have slid the bead on held it a little bit above the other bead, put some gel glue down, and then <laughs> allowed the bead to slide down because the way that I did it deposited super glue down the entire ball pin and now it is stuck to my fingers. I need to let this dry upside down. And so these type of tweezers that open by you squeezing them rather than closing by you squeezing them can make nice little clamps to help you have uh, things hanging and suspending and drying like that. So you can see it's just propped inside my container over there. And then I found these beautiful check glass beads that have two colors. They're turquoise with like a gold kind of uh, coating and then they're cut on it so that they have three sides. And I thought this would make a really beautiful kind of mysterious bottle for my eternal bookstore. I'm using my flush cutters to cut the end of the ball pin off. And you can do that with the bead on the ball pin, but you're probably going to end up then having to cut off a little bit more of that wire after the fact. You want to hold on to all the pieces, making sure your fingers aren't anywhere near the jaws of those, of those wire cutters. And then you've got your little ball pin here. And now I'm going to cut just a tiny bit of that off so that it ends inside the bead. And that way it's not going to keep my bead from standing upright. I'm going to repeat the same process by just dropping a little bit of glue on here. And because this one is just going to be one bead tall, and because the ball pin is going to disappear inside of that piece, I don't need to dry it upside down. It can just sit here and dry like this. All right, so here we have a nice selection of little bottles and the original decanter there all dry. And you can see them in relation to the size of a dollhouse wine glass over on the right. And now I want to use this little stud to make a jar. I want that 
metal part to be the base of the jar and then I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue and a gold bead to be the lid for that jar. So maybe that's something that could go on my shelf or it could be a cosmetic jar of some kind. Now I want to make a larger jar using a bead cap for the lid. Bead caps generally are used to go on either side of a bead to add some decorative elements. And you can see that one down there on the right next to the orange bead. And I have some bead caps listed on my Pinterest board, so you can look for those. I'm going to use another one of these ball pins. And, you know, ball pins may also be called head pins in the jewelry supplies. So you just want to look for the ones that have the ball on the end. And then you're simply going to thread that together like that. And then you can glue it together like we did the other one and then cut the bottom off. It probably would have been better if I had waited to cut the pin off or maybe if I had cut it a little bit shorter like I did in the previous part of the video. But whatever works for you is totally fine. This gold or this orange bead that I pulled out here is another one that I like to use for the Christmas spiders. So I've just threaded that all together and I'm sorry it's a little bit out of the shot. I'm going to let that dry upside down and then when it's dry I'll cut the ball pin off. Now as I look at this it makes me think of a lighting fixture. <laughs> so if you're trying to make some kind of like chandelier or a lighting fixture that hangs down maybe this would be a good way to do it and i'll explore that later i do want to make a chandelier or light fixture to hang down in the center of the eternal bookstore room box all right now i'm going to cut this off and watch how i hold the pin and the bead and then do my cut here's a replay <laughs> this is so that i don't fling sharp wire pieces across the room all right, here are some of those decanters and jars on my shelf. You can see the orange one here that we just made and the ones from previously with a little dollhouse wine glass. And then on the second shelf there, that purple one is made much like the orange one. And here's a replay of the smaller bottles and jars that we made. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please give it a like and a subscribe. And as always, if you make something from this tutorial, I'd love it if you tag me on Instagram. And be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series, including how to make your own miniature plants and butterfly collection. Take care and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.